you can't avoid it. If you're going to carry a brand that other people are carrying online, you have to know what those prices are. There's no doubt about it. So you have to spend a, a certain percentage of, your, percentage of your time Googling and searching what other people are selling the products you are selling in your store. And to a degree, you've got to be not matching them, but in the ballpark. You also have to know that site that has that shoe for $49.95. Oh, that $49.95 doesn't include shipping. But you know that it is a $15 shipping charge, which you can point out to the customer. My favorite is when the customer says, well, yeah, but I don't have to pay sales tax on the web to which point I look them right in the eye and I say, yes, you know, that's really true. I don't know if you're aware of it, but in our city, in our town, we pay the police and the firemen from the sales tax that are collected in stores. True. And so if we collect less sales tax, we have less first responders. And so you want to be the one <laughs> I think it's something that we gotta, we've gotta, you know, you have to tell the truth to people. And, and I don't know how much longer we can let people think that there is something that is called a free lunch. You know the cliche, and it's true, there is no such thing as a free lunch. If you don't pay a sales tax, we don't have money to pay first responders. And the budget keep getting cut and cut and cut. And that's what we're seeing today. The amount of money that's not being collected by municipalities, which directly go to fund police and fire, is amazing how much money we're losing. Customers need to know that. Yeah, we need to guilt them a little bit. And I think that that's an honest thing to do. It's one of the things we need to do. We, we always talk about product knowledge. And I think everybody in this room is very good at product knowledge. But we also have to be good at business knowledge, tax knowledge, sociology knowledge, explaining to the customer the impact of that decision to buy online and save a little or a few dollars. Because I think most customers, and again, as I said before, 1% okay, of customers are sociopaths, okay? 1% of the population are sociopaths. These, these are scary people. They, 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 they become mass murderers. Uh, uh, they are, uh, uh, sometimes executives of shoe companies. No. Uh, <laughs> small population. There's, there's uh, statistically two of us in the room right now. Uh, but most of your customers are not sociopaths. But 20% of your customers are what I call, as I mentioned earlier, bottom feeders. These are customers who will you know, beat you up for a nickel, uh, go down the street to save a dime. I got news for you right now, and you know it already. You gotta fire those folks. But yet, they're the ones, they're the ones who keep you awake at night. You can have 300 great customers during a week, and you have one bozo. And who do you worry about all weekend? That one bozo eats at you. And, and we gotta stop that. We've gotta stop listening to that 20% who just beat us up over price. Now the other 80% don't walk in and say, okay, I'll pay you 10% more, I'll pay you 15% more. No, but they will if we do all of their, our job right. If we provide them with the incredible service, we provide them with all of these things that we say we're gonna do, but we don't, in some cases, do them. But if we nail it, that customer will pay more. Because you know this past Christmas, it was one of the things that, that, that led to the most disastrous year that Best Buy had. They decided to match every price on Amazon this past Christmas. And it absolutely just about destroyed Best Buy. Matching a competitor's price is never a good idea. If I come in and say to you, I saw it $10 cheaper on this website, and you say to me, okay, I'll give you that price. What you've really said to me is all my prices are too high, you caught me gouging, now I'll give it to you at the right price. That's what you're saying to me. But if you say to the customer, well, it may appear to be $10 more, but in point of fact, it's not the same shoe. You know, use the Joe Girard. 
If you didn't ever read uh, 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 You Can Sell Anything to Anybody by Joe Girard, he told, he told one classic story in that book. And it's a, it, 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 I, I read it 35, 40 years ago, and it still resonates with me. He talked about a customer who came in to buy an automobile from him. And as you know, Joe Girard still is the world's greatest salesman, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. He looked at the sheet that the customer gave him. This is back in the 60s. And the sheet had a whole bunch of stuff on the car he wanted to buy. And so Joe opened up his price book and he priced it all out, totaled it, and handed it to the customer. The customer looked at it and said, Joe, I can get this car down the street for $300 less. And Joe said, it's not the same car. I said, Joe, it's a, it's a, it's a photocopy. I gave you, it, they costed the exact same car. And Joe said, it's not the same car. He said, what do you mean? Well, what's on my sheet that's not on theirs? And he looked at it, he said, it's got your signature at the bottom. And Joe said, that's right. When you buy the car here, you get me. And what does that mean? That means you ever have a problem with this car? You don't bring it to the service department. You call me. I will come and get you, give you a loaner car, and take your car and make sure it gets fixed the first time. Now, this is back in the day when quality was job 23. <laughs> and you could bet that that car that you were buying was going to be back in the shop pretty quick. Joe actually, true story, had a fleet of about 250 loaner cars <laughs> that he used for that. And he gave the service department manager a case of scotch every month. Now, I think that may have led to some of the problems with the service department. But, but the point is that Joe realized very early on he wasn't selling cars, he was selling a whole deal, the whole package. Any of you in the room believe that you sell shoes, you're in the wrong business. You all already know you're selling a whole bunch more. For some of your customers, you're selling fashion. For some, you're selling comfort. Some, you're selling style. You've got a whole bunch of purchase motivations. And when you begin to realize that, that's when you really begin to sell to them properly and not just on price. You see, because even if the big guys can't do it, you know, comparison with Walmart, Amazon.com, on, on all the products they carry, the basket are 9% lower. And Amazon is 14% lower than Target. So even Target and Walmart cannot compete with these guys. Why? You saw the slide earlier. They have one employee to do a million dollars in business. So their payroll is absolutely minuscule compared to what we have to pay, much less retail brick and mortar space and rents. So obviously they can be a heck of a lot less. We also need to maybe possibly change the pricing model. Even uh, uh, Target is now looking at the possibility of doing subscription pricing on products that are purchased frequently. So charging the customer a lower price, but getting a commitment from that customer. We're also starting to see a movement called reverse showrooming, where retailers are actually encouraging customers to uh, uh, share products with their friends pictures and concepts about products and pics, uh, I'm sorry, and stories about the product and when their friends buy, they get a commission for their friends purchasing. It's called reverse showrooming. We don't know whether that's going to take off or not yet, but it is out there. Join ShopRunner. ShopRunner is what I talked about earlier. That's a site that is open to uh, any retailers out there who want to join. I don't know how much it'll cost you to, to join it. Uh, but there's all kinds of really great retail stores who have signed up for ShopRunner. They now have what is called a critical mass. So they have enough stores that are involved in it. So the customers are actually using the application and paying for it. And so once again, it's a way of giving you a level playing field with Amazon Prime. It's a way of giving you that free shipping so the customer thinks, oh, hey, you know, this is absolutely a no-brainer. You might want to think about trade-ins. Again, uh, I think a lot of you in the room have already done this. Uh, this is an ad from uh, uh, New Balance North Shore Store's April trade-in sale, you know, where you have a trade-in uh, sale for customers. I mean, you don't do anything with the old shoes besides donate them. But once again, they are a way of promoting. It's a way of promoting. And so the customer thinks that they're getting, and they are getting, you know, $5, $10 for a pair of shoes that they bring in. And then we also obviously get to donate them to a good cause. And so that's the you and the consumer side. Now let's flip over. Yeah, I, I love this one. I give decap to customers who are rude to me. 
This is where I think, okay, I think ultimately, personally, there is a lot of what we can do in the store to kind of ward off showrooming, but ultimately the best defense, I really do, do believe, is in our supplier's hands. And it's going to be in our partnership with them. Part of the things that we could begin to ask suppliers for is exclusive product. And, and you know, to really, and I think smart, is I always say to, to suppliers, you know, if all you sell to is Walmart, Target, Kmart, and JCPenney and Sears, you have five big customers, you must not sleep very well at night. Because if you lose one of those customers, you're in deep trouble. But if you sell to independent retailers, you got 20,000 customers. And if one independent happens to bite the dust, not the end of the world. Strategically, I think smart companies are beginning to understand how important it is to have independent retailers. But again, we need to educate them too. We need to educate them that, that there is a huge opportunity in doing business with us and, you know something, in protecting us. New Balance, as a matter of fact, is, is going to be giving an exclusive product made in the U.S. to the independent running community this year. And this product is also not going to be allowed to be sold on the internet. So you talk about the ultimate kind of, of guarding of, of showrooming. And I think we're going to begin to see, and it won't certainly be a wildfire and, and be all kinds of products, but I really believe that smart manufacturers are going to begin to understand that I have to protect this channel. And it makes a heck of a lot of sense. Because once again, 95% of all of the retail done in the United States, all the retail doors, 95% have less than 10 employees. <laughs> That's a staggering number. And, and once again, when you saw that slide of how many jobs that independent retailers produce, that's a message that's got to be heard some point on the hill, and it's got to be heard by companies also. That it makes a heck of a lot more sense to invest in independent retail. Also, exclusivity can also be what we call time exclusivity. If you can get that shoe, that product, three months before or six months before it goes into the, the, the online channel, that's a huge opportunity. In marketing, we call it, you know, creaming the uh, uh, product, Take, skimming the cream off the top. So having the first three months, six months exclusivity before it goes into general distribution is also a great, great way. This one, I really believe, and a lot of your suppliers currently are using map pricing. I believe that the future is really in not only map pricing, the next pricing I'll get to, but minimum advertised price policies, where the manufacturer is basically saying that any retailer out there who's selling this product cannot advertise it for less than this amount. Now, map pricing is okay, but this is the pricing you really want, unilateral pricing. See, map pricing, you've already seen some examples of it. You go on a website and they can't show you the price until you put it in the uh, shopping cart and you put it in the shopping cart and it's like 30, 40% less. That's map pricing. So people can still, it's advertised price, minimum advertised price. That's why I love unilateral. Unilateral says you can't sell below this price, period. Period. Not only advertised, but in your store, at any time, you cannot go below this price. Now, I said to you earlier, Sony has just started doing some of this unilateral pricing with a lot of their uh, products, and it's a smart move, albeit maybe too late. Ping, in the golf industry, has always done it. Ping actually sends shoppers into stores and tries to negotiate deals on ping clubs. And if you are stupid enough to do it, they will pull the entire line. 
for you giving that lower price. They protect 